It's great to have you with us again today. And welcome to today's webinar. Today I want to look at the topic of using the creativity tools in Writer's Toolbox and how your students and you, the teacher, might get the most out of those features. We're going to look at the mind mapping tools and we're going to explore the different box plans and the planning tools that you can use as well. But first of all, let's have a quick look at today's task, shall we? In the daily challenges, and I hope you've all been enjoying, <clears throat> today's is thus. I'll just bring it up on your screen so you can see it here. I'm going to log in as one of the students. Or the teacher. And here we are. Yesterday's daily challenge was, of course, Roger. You had Roger in the gym. Well, today's Roger's sister, Henrietta. Roger, of course, goes to the gym religiously every Mondays and Wednesdays. His rather entrepreneurial sister, Henrietta, of course, is one step ahead. She owns a gym. How else, however, are Roger and Henrietta also different? Today, it's your job in your piece of writing to tell me how those two siblings are different and unique and why. And let's just get that W start sentence cooking too, shall we? And start it with while. So that's the daily challenge. The topic of today is creativity. And I want to start with a couple of thoughts about that. And the first is this. When we think of creativity and mind maps in the classroom, we often think of naturally of ideas and coming up with ideas. But here's the challenge for you and something I'd like you to ponder as educators. Personally, I don't believe ideas are the hard part. True, we tend to maximize idea generation in the classroom. We, we feel for the students that perhaps somehow they haven't got the, the ideas requisite for the task at hand. So we filled the board with all sorts of great ideas and inspiration. And then we say, off you go. That's one of the most difficult things you can do to a child who's hoping to write. Because even if you struggle to ideas, struggle with ideas and have some paucity of skill, you are now overwhelmed. There are so many. And the underlying truism is actually, I think, closer to this. That in writing, ideas are not the hard part. Ideas are actually the easy bit. The, the hard part can often be learning the thinking skills around evaluating, deciding, ordering, judgment. These things are much harder. And they're the, high, they're, the, they're the second level of skills that any creative works with. After you've come up with the ideas, you've got to decide which one's the best and why. And so my challenge you today, as I show you the writing tools we have in Writer's Toolbox, is also to think of this skill. Do not neglect teaching these skills in the classroom. Sometimes it's helpful to actually just give the ideas. Give the students the ideas. And then you say, here they are. Now you pick which do you think is the best and why. And start to fashion and hone those secondary, those higher order level thinking skills when it comes to idea generation. So let's now go into Writer's Toolbox. And have a look and see how Writer's Toolbox deals with these sorts of things. Let's go. So we'll leave the daily task behind and go to the toolbox itself. What I'd like to show you, first of all, is we'll go through a couple of um, writing tools and show you how they're the basic functionality 
of the creativity tools. Once you click write and you're amongst the writers here, you can see that you've got three choices. You can create, plan or write. Selecting, in essence, the young writers put in charge of the writing process. So I'm gonna create and plan and write today, all three. And then you have the choice, the decision, which of the writers will you use? Well, today I'm actually gonna click on Michelle de Montan here, the author of the essay in the 1500s and use him. So I'll click on classic essay. The first screen I've come through, uh, I've arrived at, is the creativity part of the site. And here we've got this great mind map tool. I can type a task in here, as well as I can attach images. So let's just type a task in for the day, shall we? Um, uh, um, uh, which is the best breakfast and why? Let's just throw some images in there. And I, uh, while you were doing your um, morning exercise regime this morning, I've been off hunting a few images. So I've got this um, some useful ones here. We've got, uh, first of all, the essential um, baked beans on toast. Those of you who are of um, <clears throat> the Scottish heritage will appreciate the uh, porridge with nicely decorated berries. Um, you healthy nuts out there, um, most of you live, um, no I won't say where you live, uh, but there is um, a lot, delicious bowl with uh, cranberries and muesli and then of course you um, particularly energetic people out there who like to start your day off with a bang well, there you have it. So, which is your choice? Again, you can wonderfully uh, jump on any of these images and according to the size you've uploaded them, that's the size in which they'll come through when you blow them up. So clearly my uh, porridge choice maybe it was a big hit. But we can do some idea generation. So let's do that. Which is the best breakfast? Well, you know, <clears throat> I quite like uh, baked beans. Um, uh, why? Well, um, um, they're good for nutrition. Um, they're quite a neat colour. You can put, um, you can, um, you can hide uh, lots of butter on the toast. Um, I've got the neat colour. Yes, well, 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 baked beans are good. Well, you know, it's a, it's a much, it's a, it's a cheaper option. Option than um, um, waffles. And of course, it um, aids digestion. And uh, one more, one more big finish. The baked beans would be the preferred choice because, um, <clears throat> oh, they're quick. They are quick. So the student can work their way around the mind map here. You could even put a central topic in the middle if you like. I've chosen baked beans. And fill in the circles around the outside. That's idea generation. But one of the things I've always been conscious to build into writer's toolbox was to help the child also with this concept of making judgment, the second tier thinking that surrounds idea generation. So this time I've got three stars over here and I can just grab the stars to select now of those ideas, which is my best. So I think quite, um, I think baked beans are particularly good because they, they, um, they aid digestion. That sounds very healthy. I'll put that number one. I can put number two. Uh, they um, are definitely cheaper than waffles. And number three, well, they're quite a nice color. Then, of course, if I want to, and I think, well, yes, maybe actually number three is not number three. Possibly I can, I can, uh, uh, Nutrition is probably stronger than the colour. 
So I'll put nutrition and change the position of my stars. You can do that as much as you like, changing the position of your stars and altering the order of your ideas in terms of their importance. So that's the mind map functionality. As I say, a student can drop images in and write a task. If as a teacher you had set a task, that would already have populated here and any images you've chosen would already be there for the task as the teacher. Next step is the planning tools. So let's go through the planning. Now, what Writer's Toolbox has done is it's taken there, as you can see in the planning stage, it knows that I'm trying to write an essay, so the introduction is given, but I had ideas there. Number one was A's digestion. That's already pre-copulated as the second, as the first body, body paragraph in my piece. Number two is it's cheaper than waffles. That's come in as number three. You'll see the three indicated there. And the fourth body paragraph, which was my third most important idea, is nutrition. That's there too. If I think, for example, that actually I think quick is probably a better choice than nutrition over here, because I'm thinking about this topic more and more and getting quite excited about running baked beans. I can grab that circle, drop it across there, and immediately that paragraph recolors with that new idea. That's kind of fun. You can also do this. I can switch the order of my ideas as well in the planning tool. It's very versatile. It responds to what you're trying to say. And if you think perhaps you might like to write another body paragraph, you simply click on the plus, it inserts another paragraph before the conclusion and I can bring that idea across and drop it in that paragraph. Planning tool, of course, has more features than just this. <clears throat> Let's actually plan one of these paragraphs. To do so, I move my cursor across the box plan itself, and I click on the paragraph I'd like to plan in more detail. And up before me opens a window with more detailed scaffolding, scaffolding on how to plan my response. So in this paragraph, I'm trying to show, show, prove, explain that, well, of course, you know, um, baked beans are great for digestion. Um, key evidence I might want to include, and here I can just type in some of the things I might want to include in my paragraph. Well, um, they, and of course, they're beans. Um, their their um, uh, the stomach um, enjoys the soft texture and easily breaks this down. And of course, finally, um, they're good for digestion because they tend to. Um, uh, well, let's just cut straight to it. The the speeds up um, import are useful useful bodily functions. The student can also choose the style of the paragraph they may wish to write. Clicking on that button reveals the various paragraphs we teach in Writer's Toolbox. Straight away, you can pick one you might want the student to write or you write, and there it is. It's connected now to that particular paragraph. When you want the scaffolding window to close, just click on the paragraph itself again, it closes, and you can open another one. They're quick. Well, no, um, fast. I'm not going to fill them all out, but I'll just fill out two. And I'll show you what happens in the next screen as we move into the writing phase. Well, they're fast to cook um, on the pan. Uh, they only take minutes in the microwave, mere seconds. Uh, but of course, you must be careful not to explode them. And this one here, I think particularly could go quite nicely as a hammer paragraph. So I can work through my piece of writing and plan all the various paragraphs 
I'm going to compose. At any stage as I'm working through this, I can click and see my task, plus I can click on the images. And here, again, lovely size. I can blow that image up, see, and it's all at split. Now, doesn't that just make you want to stop right now, leave this webinar, <laughs> and go and have baked beans for lunch? I mean, that is the mouth-watering stuff. So, <clears throat> enough distraction. Let's hit now the writing phase. I'm going to click right up there, and I'm going to go through to the writing phase. What's quite nice here is the, the box plan if I click on it, you can see the mind map above me and the box plan here has already populated with the thoughts from my planning stage. I just click on the paragraph. It already says that it wants me to do a lawyer paragraph. If I click on that lawyer paragraph, the little man there, the click on the lawyer man, up comes the lawyer paragraph. I can bring that up next to me if I want to actually use that paragraph form. I can see an example of that paragraph form, close that up. I can watch a video on that paragraph form, any stage to help me as I compose my piece. Box plan is highly useful because that's the first, my first body paragraph, so to speak, on aiding digestion. The, the next body paragraph is of course, the hammer, there's the hammer, and all the ideas for that particular paragraph are now up right next to me as I begin to write. So that's, that's the basics. But let's jump in and have a look at some of the other tools because usefully not all the writers in Writer's Toolbox behave exactly the same way with the creativity tools. Some have gotten in an increased, a heightened level of sophistication. So let's have a look. And to do this next section of the talk, I'm gonna log out and log in as a student. This is Boris's student account once again. Poor old Boris is really feeling the pressure today. What I've done again this morning is to create a task. And it's called our story challenge. As a teacher, when you create a task, the lovely bit about task creation here is if when you build a task, you select that you want the student to create and to plan and to write, then those steps are automatically preloaded into the task the student commences. So I'm going to click our story challenges and Boris the student. And now that challenge will take me to where the teacher wanted to begin my piece. And here it is. Our challenge this week is to write a four paragraph story. The good news, today I just want you to do the first paragraph. So pick one of the images I've given you and write your first paragraph on the setting of the story. Don't jump into character. Tell me all about the place first. Oh, and don't forget to plan thoroughly. So you can see here, there's a few interesting selections of places I might um, pick as the location for my story. I've got the woodland, Canadian woodlands. I've got something that looks like the falls in, gosh, who knows where, and desert island discs. Well, I'm going to go for that. Deep in the winter wonderland of outer Bulgaria. So here we go. First of all, let's just get some thoughts down because I just wanted some thoughts about this cottage and what I can see here in this cottage and what I might be up for. So let's just go. So I've got some, um, well, I've got some pine trees. I can see that, that's gonna help me. Um, I've got some, uh, there's just, yeah, there's a log cabin. Um, and uh, there's a sunset. And I think also I quite this idea of the, the, uh, the fire in the window. 
So that was useful. <laughs> and I've had a little bit of a, 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 an idea generation about this task, but let's go to the planning phase. The particular writer the teacher has set for this phase is a novelist. Actually, it's a story, sorry, it's a storyboard writer. And I will hop out of the task shortly to show you those in the writers, but two writing tools behave quite distinctly in the writers when it comes to the planning, and that is the novelist and storyboard writer. Both of those are enabled particularly to help you with the narrative form. Because if I'm going to click on where, which is where my story begins, and let's just say my story is going to commence with the log cabin, I open up my scaffold, and now it's quite different from the scaffold you had just a moment ago when you were composing your essay. It says, open your story with where. Your reader needs a place to begin. So like a movie, start your story by telling us where we are. What's the time, the place, the city, the setting? What can you see? Tell us. Well, again, I'm disjointed now from where I began. So I can bring my task back or I can bring my images back. And there I have it right next to me now. As I begin the where and the planning stage, it's quite powerful this. There's the log cabin and here's where I'm going to go with this. So while well, I can see this log cabin, I can see a log cabin. And what I want to show you is here, if the student merely responds to the prompts, I want to demonstrate to you the richness, thing, the richness that then comes forth as they begin to write. So what country is this? Well, I think probably it should be Bulgaria. Let's we'll see what happens. Uh, whereabouts, what town, city or location? Um, well, it's the mountains, you plonker. Of course, it's obvious it's the mountains. Um, mountains, um, and they must be the Bulgarian mountains, which of course, and some of you, before you, you jump to it, there must be, of course, the Balkan mountains. There's no such thing as Bulgarian mountains, they're the Balkan mountains. So we'll just get rid of mountains, they're the Balkan mountains. What year is it? I think it's probably um, 2008, tough year, lots of snow that year. It's definitely winter. At what time of day? It's probably, I'd say it's about, mm, 6 p.m. and what else can you see in the scene? Well, I've got my log cabin and, and a fence and a fire in the window. I'm not going to write the who today, but I just want to show you as this develops some of the really interesting things that are there in the other scaffolds because the paragraph two suggests the child might go to the character next. So We'll do this into next week as we can build, do more, or spend more time looking at narratives. But I could, um, here, I could jot down the name of my character, which in this story is going to be John. He's going to be 23. Um, where does he live? He lives in, in Austria. And what job does he do? Well, he's unemployed. Um, and good, but no, he's not good for nothing. Uh, what color eyes does he have? Well, he has hazel eyes. And he's wearing a, a, a red shirt with shorts and, uh, and blue shorts. Blue shorts in midwinter. And immediately you think, what an idiot. So you can populate these paragraphs. Now let's go and write and see what happens at that stage. And there's a couple of features here, particularly I want to show you. There's the box plan. And as I go to write my piece, and I can select my house and bring it up there again, in a lovely image, the main screen. I have these prompts to help me write my paragraph. More detail has been extracted because of the scaffolds than if I was just sitting there and thinking, well, I might do a bit or a bit of that. It's focused my thoughts the specific planning tools in a more concentrated way. But that's not all. I'd like to show you another tool, some, some of the other features here on the pages in the different writers, because they are unique. They've got helps there, 
according to the type of writing you might be doing. The classic story. Start with a place. This is the hot tips menu. And this offers all sorts of stylistic writing tips and techniques. And I've clicked that. Usefully, these menus will populate below one after the other. So if I want to read a particular one, I can use this menu anywhere and stick it on my screen. It says, if you're start, stuck with your writing, start with the place. Louis Sasha does it beautifully in holes. If you want to read an, an illustration of that to your children in class, no matter what age, actually, it doesn't matter. Start with the first couple of paragraphs of holes. And you'll see there, as Sasha's saying, it's all about Camp Green Lake. That's the focus for this first paragraph. So I'm going to have a go in the closing moments of our session and see if I can fluff it. But we'll begin <clears throat> by honouring this box plan and see what I can do about the Bulgarian mountains. I think I've got my all, everything I need. I've got my start with a the place. There's my task. I may even close that task. I know what I have to do. I'm going to have the box plan front and centre. Sentence spinner. No, I think I'm okay without that. I've got my imagery. Here we go. Right. Um, uh, winter in, see, I've just got that, in the Bulgarian mountains was unforgiving. Now I want to do some of these clouds. The clouds um, which had hovered high above the valley floor all day, now nestled in among the trees. Pines. Now these trees, trees are problematic. So let's go the tree description. Um, <clears throat> they're trees. Um, help me out here. Somebody please put up a comment. Uh, I need some words. I need three words. Quickly, you people out there in Tipoki, help me with this. Pines, um, green. I need two more words. Quick. Um, green. Um, oh, somebody in the chat. Oh, you've got multiples in the chat. Here we go. What's happening here in the chat? Please help me out. Oh, gosh. Um, green, yes, fabulous. I'll go with that. Green. Arom aromatic. <laughs> oh, yes, that's very nice. Thank you very much. That's very helpful. Um, vast, regal. Um, yes, love that. Nick has got cones. Kayleen's got snow covered. You're not paying attention, eh? That's wonderful. Bristling. Oh, Nick, that's nice. Green. Well, Bristling's bar far better than my green. So bristling, um, aromatic, cutting spell aromatic. Um, uh, thank you, uh, Katie. I love that too. Let's just go snow covered. Oh, snow covered is. We've got tall, snow covered, regal. I'm going to probably, um, yes, cascading is nice too, isn't it? Oh, well done. G. Smith, good choice. Cascading. And of course, I'm casting the M-dash symbols, you see. Um, stood motionless. Hmm. Their branches still like Russian sentries on the guard in Moscow. Now we're getting somewhere. And Let's not leave this story behind. In a clearing, deep in the something forest, somebody, oh, that's nice. That angel, lovely. I do like that. In the snow dusted, hyphenated because it's acting as, a, as an adjective. In the snow dusted forest, a log cabin waited. Final sentence, it, it was just the prize Boris had been searching. 
And there we have it. Winter in the Bulgarian mountains was unforgiving. The clouds which had hovered high above the valley floor all day now snuggled in. I probably wanted snuggled in better than nestled among the trees. Pines bristling, aromatic, cascading, stood motionless, their branches still like Russian sentries on guard in Moscow, having drunk too much vodka. No, I added that, I added that in. And in a clearing, deep in the snow-dusted forest, a log cabin waited. It was just the prize Boris had been searching for. I'm too terrified to do the feedback, but we'll see what happens. Hey, 83%. Yes, I've got to work on my average sentence length. And my paragraph's too short. Yes, I need a few more sentences in my paragraph. I do agree. Another one or two wouldn't hurt. So there we have it. <clears throat> the creativity and the planning tools on Writer's Toolbox. Try them out. You'll have a lot of fun. And try the different writers and watch how this tools also respond uniquely according to the writing you're doing. Thanks for watching today. It's been a lot of fun. Same time tomorrow. See you then.